Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Uh, I know the camera probably looks a little weird because that's because I have my uh, spinner set up um, like uh, my little barrier and it's really white. And so I had to flip the camera angles <laughs> quickly at the last second. Here, this will help a little bit. But thank you for joining me on uh, our Friday demo. Um, this is going to be a fun one, an interesting one, I hope. It's something I haven't tried before. So it's going to be a test. Uh, we're going to experiment and see what happens. So uh, I'll show you what we're going to do in a, in a second. Um, I've got my spinner set up, and I've got a bunch of different paints mixed up, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. It's basically going to be a, uh, I'm combining two techniques. So I'm going to be combining a flip cup, and, uh, and that's going to be my base coat, a uh, flip cup for my base coat. And then I'm going to have a, um, a funnel and do a funnel drag uh, through my base coat. And then we're going to spin it out and see what happens. So kind of a fun experiment. I thought of it uh, last night or, or a couple days ago. I was just thinking about it, thinking of interesting ways to create an interesting base coat um, instead of just a regular, you know, standard uh, all color all, or one color base coat, this will have a little more interest and um, there's some value changes. It's a, they're all very similar colors uh, for my base coat. I wanted it to be uh, very similar, um, but yet have a lot of variation. So I'll show you all the colors in a second. Uh, but welcome. I, we've got a full house already. Susan is here and Jenny is here. Hey, Jenny. Shannon. Hi, Shannon. Pat and uh, Monique is here. Awesome. Um, so, and Carla is here. So let's uh, flip it over and um, we'll see what's going to happen. Sorry about my hair. I just got a haircut today and it looks all crazy. Um, every time I get a haircut, it looks terrible. For <laughs> I don't know why. It should look perfect and great. But for me, the first day is always kind of a bad day. So anyway, so I'll flip it over so you can uh, look at the canvas instead of my hair. Uh, hey, Karen. Karen is here. So uh, let's flip it over and uh, I'll show you what I got going on. So here we go. So here is our uh, uh, canvas. This is a 16 by 20 and I've got it set up on my spinner here. And um, I just have my little palette knife just so my camera can focus on something. It doesn't like like a big white area like this. So I've got a little funnel right here, and I'll tell you how much paint I'm going to put in that. But uh, and then over here, oh, it's kind of hard to see all my colors, but I'll bring them over into the frame. So for my base coat, I've got a, a cup right here. This is marked. It's a 12 ounce cup, but it's marked right here for 10 ounces. So that's enough paint for normally uh, for like a ring pour. So instead of a flip cup, I'm using like a ring pour amount. Uh, because we're going to be adding extra paint on top of that with the funnel. So I'm going to fill this up 10 ounces and do a flip cup right on my bare canvas. I'm not going to put a base coat on the canvas first. This is pretty much going to be our base coat. So I'm going to fill that up and I've got several different colors. I've got a, this is basically just an off white. It's white with a little bit of silver in it to give it a little bit of a sparkly kind of warm gray or kind of a gray look. And then I've got a Try to keep these in the frame. Then I've got uh, just some metallic white here, and metallic white uh, from Artist Loft. And it's there's also a tiny bit of silver in there, uh, so they're very similar in value. Those two. Uh, and then I've got uh, this is basically silver. It's all silver and a little bit of white in it. So I kind of did the reverse because I wanted all these to be relatively close in value, in lightness and darkness. So these are all fairly light colors. And uh, so I've got that one. And then this one is a little bit darker. This is a, it's, it's got a, it's a leftover paint that I've had, but I put a little more white in it. So it's kind of a, like a warm, like kind of a, I don't know what you'd call that. Um, a lilac color, kind of a, a pretty neutral uh, light purple color, but it's very similar in value. Like all of these paints right here are very close. So this is kind of the lightest one is our white. Then this one's a little bit darker, just a touch. This is a tiny bit darker, and then this is uh, the darkest of the three of the four. But they're very close in value, and that's what I wanted. And so all of those are going to be in my layered in my cup. I'm going to flip that on my canvas, and that's going to be our base coat. And then I've got some four other colors right here. This is a these are all kind of leftover paints 
This is a warm, like a dark brown, gray, coppery color. So that's going to be my dark. And that's going to be kind of a interesting dark color. I've got this uh, kind of a pretty uh, sea green color. And that's also kind of a leftover paint. I've got this um, kind of a magenta, a neutralized kind of a magenta color, um, which I kind of like. And then I've got this uh, kind of metallic orange that I kind of made a little less intense by adding a little bit of a, I think it was a brown or um, like a copper to it. So it's a little less intense than like the straight metallic orange right out of the tube. So I don't know if these colors are going to work well together. We'll find out. But uh, so we're going to have some kind of a lighter, lighter base coat. These four colors will be in our funnel, which I've got right here. And in the funnel, I'm going to add, I've got a little line in here. It's going to be hard to see. It's right here, maybe. And that's five ounces that's going to be in here. So less than this uh, cup here. So I don't want to, because I want to have a lot of negative space with our, our light, like gray colors. So five ounces, I think. And I'm going to kind of dance that around our base coat and then maybe do a tiny bit of tilting, but then spin it out and see what happens. So here we go. I think uh, let's get started. First thing, glove time. I need gloves. So let me grab some. Here we go. So I don't know if it's going to work, um, but uh, we're going to find out together. And you wouldn't have to spin this out. I just thought spinning it out would be kind of fun. But you could do this and uh, just tilt it like a normal, like uh, like a normal flip cup or something like that. But we're going to try it with the spinner. So uh, let me layer my cup first. And I got to get my little flipping tool. Here we go. So I can flip my cup over. 10 ounces is a lot to flip over the old fashioned way. So I'm going to do it the safe way. And um, then if you have any questions, by the way, um, you can throw them up in the comments. I see um, Sharon has got a question right here. It's can you mix different brands together? Absolutely. Um, I've got all kinds of different brands that I've mixed up. I've got some Liquitex Basics. I've got Artist Loft. I've got Amsterdam, I'm sure, in here. Um, and I know I have some, what else? Probably some Masters Touch. So there's about four different brands. Oh, and I have the Artist Loft like Flow Acrylic in here. That's my white. So I've got a bunch of different brands together. So you can mix them all together um, no, without any problem. I do that all the time. Uh, it can be helpful to just use the same type of paint, like the same kind of consistency. So uh, like, you know, Artist Loft and Liquitex and what else do I have? I don't think I have any Amsterdam within reach here, but all these, all these types of paints are like a medium, um, uh, kind of like a, a medium bodied acrylic paint. So like these paint tubes, you can, you can mix and match all of these together, but you could also, um, add paints like this, like the uh, Deco Art Metallics, um, some craft paints, those work well. Um, and of course, you could use the more expensive stuff. That will also work great. So yeah, you can mix a bunch of paints together. As long as it's acrylic paint, you're pretty much in good shape. You just want to get them all to the same consistency. And uh, by the way, this is all mixed up with my easy formula, my easy mixing formula, which is uh, two parts flow trawl, one part paint, and then just enough water to get kind of a, a very slight mound, like a small mound when you stream the paint back in the cup. So hopefully that's helpful. But if you have any other questions, throw them in the comments. And uh, let's get to uh, layering our cup. So I'm going to start with this, our like silvery white. Just put some of that in there. Um, then I'll go to kind of that the silver with a little bit of white in it, then maybe some of the metallic white. I love using metallic white because it cr helps create a lot of cells. And then our kind of dark purple. And then you can go back here. We can do high pour if we want to, for a little more blending. That's fun. And then do some of the silver. Um, maybe I'll flip my cup around and then layer it from the other side. Why not? Here's some more of our purple color. 
And then hopefully I can save some of this. I'd also like to use maybe a little bit of our base coat color in our funnel um, to help kind of incorporate some of our base coat color into our funnel colors, kind of unify everything a little bit. That's always a good idea. And so here's the end of our metallic white. Um, maybe a little bit of our silver. Maybe a little more of this stuff, the purple, and then I add all the silver in there. I'm almost there. And there we go. So I have some of my white left, which is good. So I can add that maybe in here in the funnel a little bit. So we've got our cup all layered. So let's flip it on our canvas. And I just like to do it kind of the easy way. So I just pull it over on my chopper, then slide her right off. And let it sit there for a second. Okay. And let's uh, flip our cup off. So I'm gonna just pull it. We got a big, I'm not thrilled with that puddle right away. So right away, we've got kind of a weird looking uh, paint puddle. We could do like a lip drag maybe through there. That would be kind of be fun. Maybe another one of those. Just wanna create some interest. You know, I like that, that's better. And then I'm gonna tilt this a little bit. Um, I'm not going to tilt over the edges. I just want to expand the paint puddle. So I have uh, plenty of paint to, to drag my funnel through. So there we go. I'm going to set this aside. And I'm going to just pick this up. And uh, I just want to expand my paint puddle. So this is kind of the first step in my tilting process. And we'll get some interesting things happening, perhaps, in our our base coat here. There we go. And I'm gonna just um, maybe turn that around. That's a nice thing about a spinner. I'm gonna keep most of that on there. So that's about it or else it's gonna start to uh, spill over the edge, but that's fine. I think we're in good shape. So I'm going to put this back on my spinner like that. And there are uh, push pins on the bottom of my canvas on each corner are push pins. So they kind of lock into this plate that I have on here. So it kind of keeps my canvas uh, from moving around. So I think that looks pretty good. So now, why don't we, we're going to take our funnel and I'm gonna I have to put it somewhere before we, um, <clears throat> excuse me, before we begin adding our colors. So I think I'm going to, let's see, I'll start over here. I wanna start, I don't wanna start in the center because we're gonna be kind of moving around, uh, moving our funnel around in an interesting way. Um, we've got some interesting lines here already in our puddle. So we could kind of use those as maybe some compositional lines and, and work off of those. We'll see. I think I'm going to start right here. So I'm going to just put my uh, funnel down and it's going to want to move around on me. Geez, this is going to be difficult. My gosh. Okay. I can kind of stabilize it. So there we go. So here we go. I'm going to um, add, a, what am I going to add first? Maybe some of this green would be kind of fun and some of the purple, maybe our dark color, some of this funky orange. It's kind of like a burnt orange. It's kind of a pretty metallic color. Maybe I'll go back to our green. I think I want some more of that dark. Then maybe I'll put some of the white and uh, add a little bit of uh, lightness to that. Just so it helps it incorporate into the our, our base coat a little more. 
Maybe a little of this, and then maybe I'll end with a little bit, bit of that white. A touch of the white, and maybe a touch of the uh, orange. There we go. That's about five ounces. So we're in pretty good shape. i got to move some of these cups out of the way here. And we'll get ready to move our fall around. I see Gail is here. Gail Bernston. Thanks for dropping by, Gail. Gail's awesome. Um, she's a fantastic uh, acrylic pouring artist and photographer. So check her out if you don't know Gail. Um, so now, what are we going to do? We're going to... Um, I'm going to lift my funnel very carefully. So just a small, small amount of paint comes out of it at a time. And uh, just kind of dance it around our canvas. And you can always kind of push it back down to the canvas to kind of think about it a little bit. Oop. And I don't want to let too much out at once. And kind of uh, it's kind of interesting. I'm gonna kind of move it down here, kind of in this uh, empty area. My goal here is just to make some an interesting shape, interesting line. Because uh, it's all going to change quite a bit when we start uh, to do our spinning. I'm just about at the end of my funnel. So that's a pretty good place to end. I'm going to kind of end right on that edge there. And that is it. So I'm going to move that off the out of the way. And then I've got to... I'll wipe this out. What I like to do when I'm using like gadgets like this, um, I like to wipe it out. And then I have a bucket of water right under my table. So I'll dump it in there. So I will do that in, after the video. So I'll just leave it here for now. So it looks a little dark and murky, but I think once we start spinning, some of those other colors will pop out, hopefully. That's the goal anyway. So one thing you could do now, um, which I might do, is do a little torch just because I've got some air bubbles in my base coat. So wouldn't hurt. Um, I really don't torch to generate cells, mostly just to pop bubbles um, when I'm using a Floetrol, you know, mix like this. So, all right, there we go. So we could also do a little bit of tilting if we wanted to adjust this before we um, tilt. So I could kind of move it around and, uh, you know, alter the, the lines and the shapes a little. That might be kind of a, a good idea. And that always helps uh, kind of break up, you know, this looks kind of, you know, man-made because of, you know, it is man-made, but um, tilting just kind of helps give it much more organic, natural feel. So I'm gonna tilt some down here. Also, it'll help with the spinning. We don't have to spin off quite so much. I think that looks pretty good. So I think we're ready to go. And we're getting a little bit of our color kind of popping up through there. So I'm going to give it a shot. So let's give it a spin. It's kind of a gentle spin to start. I hope you don't get dizzy. <laughs> OK, oops. So we've kind of expanded the paint over some of these edges, which is nice. I'm going to give it a little harder spin now. It sounds like it's raining. All right. Slow her down. And here we go. All right, cool. Well, that's looking pretty interesting. Um, 
Very interesting. It's it's very abstract, which I like. Um, I think our base code is cool. And let's see. Do I want to do any more? I wish there was some more orange popping through. We've got some in here, a little bit in here. Um, not a ton of orange, but I think just enough maybe. I don't know if much more is going to pop up. But let's see. Now you could also, uh, we could also take this off and do some more tilting uh, manually to kind of change this around. Maybe I'll try that. So we've got everything covered. So the spinning, uh, we've kind of completed that, but now we could do a little bit of tilting on our own. Let's see if we can alter some of these shapes and maybe get some of those other colors to pop through. So I'm just going to tilt around here, see what happens. And you get those big kind of drips of paint. You can kind of direct them and they can act as some cool compositional elements. It's kind of like a marble roll, actually, if you know, have done that technique. Only the paint is kind of acting as the marble, like right in here. I kind of like that. Let's see if we can... Create some more interest. So I'm really just playing around. with uh, tilting and moving these things. And everyone's gonna have a different like opinion of what they like and don't like as far as uh, compositional things go. I'm gonna let that drip run off the edge. Kind of like that. Go back. So at some point you'll say, you know, when is enough enough? And I think we're getting very close to that point. So let me go, I'm just gonna tilt this back a little bit and then I think I might call it good. Yeah, we definitely lost a lot of that orange. There are little hints, but it does not want to uh, take center stage, that's for sure. So, all right, let's see what we got. It's, a very, it's definitely an interesting technique um, that I think I'll explore in the future um, having, you know, your uh, flip cup be your base coat and uh, with very similar colors and then doing something else inside of that. Um, you could have done a direct pour on top, like a ribbon pour would have been cool. Um, just the funnel drag like we did and then just tilt it manually without the spinning. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities that you could do with this one, which I like. And I, I liked it just after we spun it. I thought that was a very interesting composition. Um, very abstract. I just wanted to break it up, just see what would happen. So this is an experiment. So I wasn't planning on, on making a, like a masterpiece painting or anything like that. Just to plan around and see what we could do with this technique. So, all right, let me see here. So I'm just, I'm just taking a look at it. I do like 
the base coat a lot, like which is now our negative space, all the light colors, because there's so much interest in there. Um, but if you, I'm looking at it in person, like you're right in front of me, but I'm looking at it on the screen as well. And uh, it's very subtle, like all of those interesting details. These big shapes really pop out, which I kind of like. So um, I think I'm going to leave it there, but it, it's an interesting, it's an interesting painting. Um, but I'm definitely going to try it some more with this technique. So, um, and these were all kind of rather muted colors. So again, they were all kind of leftover colors and they're all a little bit muted. So it would be cool, um, as Sharon mentioned, like with some brighter colors, more vibrant colors, that would definitely be very cool. Or um, <clears throat> more of a value switch. So like really dark colors, like my dark, like this really dark color kind of disappeared also. So uh, we have kind of a, it's a very middle value painting. We've got a lot of lights, light values, and then the kind of middle values. So in that sense, it's a little bit boring, um, but it would have been nice if we had some more of the, the orange and things like that pop through. But you know, you never know exactly what you're gonna get with these paintings. But um, let me take a look at any questions that you might have. I'm gonna, let's see here, I'm gonna flip it back. And um, I'll check and see if you have any questions for me. I think I saw a few. Uh, let me scroll back up here. And uh, thanks for all the great comments, everyone. Everyone thinks it's very interesting, very abstract. Gail would have um, been tempted to finger wreck it. Yeah, it's a good idea. I didn't see that. That's that would have been a good idea. So, all right. Let's see, and uh, Nancy is asking. Um, is there a common base liquid or powder that all paint manufacturers use when they make paint um, hydrate? Um, well, I know if it's an acrylic paint, they're using an acrylic polymer. So, and then that you can get that in like different, it's not all exactly the same kind of acrylic polymer, but it's all, it'll all work together. Um, so I know that's all common and related. It's not really a powder, I don't think. Uh, some of the pigments might come in a powdered form. I know you can buy pigments in powdered form and then make your own like acrylics or oil paints. Um, I'm not exactly sure how the, the big paint manufacturers do it. I think they get it in like vats of very concentrated, uh, like almost like a paste color. Um, but I'm not positive about that. But uh, yeah, it's all based on like an acrylic polymer. So good question. Interesting question. Let's see. And Monique likes it. It's not boring. <laughs> oh, thanks, Monique. So it's not exactly boring, boring, but uh, it could be a little more exciting, I guess. Thank you, though. All right. So if you have any questions, uh, throw them in the comments. That would be cool. And uh, let's see, I've got, um, anything I want to explore, um, uh, Vet here is, she wants to explore the ribbon pores on a flip cup base. Yeah, that would be really fun. Um, I might try that as well. Um, do a flip cup, very similar to what we did. And you could also do a dark, you can make a dark flip cup, you know, base with all dark colors. That would be very interesting too, or light, like a light values like we had here, and then do ribbons on the top of that. And then you can do tilting kind of manually. This might've worked better if I had just done it all manually without any of the spinning. Um, if I try it again, I'm probably gonna do that and, and get rid of the spinner, just tilt like I normally would. I think you can kind of control the composition a little bit better, but tilting's fun. I wanted to try it out. So, and uh, Susan is asking, uh, what is a ribbon pour? Uh, ribbon pour is very easy or very 
simple, basically. Uh, you just layer a cup, kind of like we did uh, for our, our flip cup or a ring pour or something like that. But instead of pouring it straight, like on a, um, like either flipping it or pouring it straight, like you would on a straight pour or, or a ring pour, you pour it um, across the canvas and it kind of creates a ribbon effect. Um, and it, you could also kind of call that a, like a wandering straight pour. Some people call it that. It's very similar. They're very similar in like technique. Like, so I know Sarah Mack does that all the time, like wandering straight pours. Um, you go a little bit slower with the wandering straight pour. The ribbon pour you can go a little bit quicker, a little bit faster. Um, but that's basically what it is. And uh, cool, that's a great idea though, or a good question, Susan. Yeah, ribbon pour on this type of a, a flip cup base coat would be kind of cool. All right. So let's see. Any other questions? I'm going to see if I can pull something up really quick for you. Um, let's see, where is that? Okay, just one sec. So, and uh, Lily says, um, Chris uh, Je um, Jezik, I think is how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. Um, does beautiful ribbon pours. Yeah, she's really good. Yeah, she does beautiful stuff. Um, now, ribbon pours are, are fun to do. Um, you have to kind of control the ribbon and the, like, the speed of your cup. So there's a little, you know, playing around with it if you're, if it's your first time, but um, they're very, very fun. And yeah, Chris does great, great uh, paintings. And uh, Lee has a, a comment here. He said he did a pour last week and thought it would it'd be creative and put it in the sun. Um, and then the paint split. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the reason that happened was uh, the paint on top dried too quickly and the paint underneath was still wet. And that is usually what causes uh, a lot of cracking and, and uh, splitting uh, when the paints dry at different uh, levels. The paints usually dry from top down, but you want to you don't want to put them in the in extreme heat or direct sun will dry the top really fast. And then you risk that splitting part. So um so for sure and then gail has a dan hodges yeah he's amazing um i love dan um he makes some fantastic uh paintings and um um he does a lot of flip cups and he uses he's got a specific silicone recipe that he uses and uh, he uses a polycrylic in a lot of his mixtures um to to create a very interesting um uh it's uh, he uses Elmer's glue and polycrylic, uh, and then some silicone. But his paintings are really great. Uh, you can look him up. He's only on uh, Carla's uh, group, I think. Um, I can't think of Carl uh, her name. Shoot, the name of her group. But uh, it might come to me. But Dan is great. If you just type in Dan Hodges, I'm sure it'll pop up. I don't really like to use polycrylic. It's not a water-based, well, it's a water-based product, but there's a lot of chemicals in it and uh, it, you can be sensitive to it. It gives me a headache and um, I, I warn you about using it in an enclosed area. Um, I don't love polycrylic, but, um, but Dan uses it uh, expertly. And uh, let's see here. I'm just checking for other questions. And yeah, I don't see any other questions. A lot of comments, which are great. Um, but uh, let's see here. Uh, Gail is asking how I varnish. Um, I do a couple different ways of varnishing. 
Um, I have varnished. I've used polyacrylic to varnish. Um, it works okay. I don't love it. My favorite varnish is uh, Liquitex, um, uh, the, li the professional Liquitex varnish. Um, it works really well for me. I use that with a, a foam brush. And um, I like to use either the satin or, the, or mi mix my own sheen. Um, I don't like the high gloss, really. I'm not a huge high gloss person. So I like more of a satin gloss, satin finish or a like a, like a semi-gloss. Um, but uh, Liquitex varnish is great. And uh, that's what I use for most of my paintings. I've also, but I've used many different finishes over the years. I've used a lot of spray-on finishes, which are work well and they're pretty easy for beginners. Um, and uh, I've experimented with a lot of different things. That's kind of my favorite. Um, I do. I did a video a little while ago, uh, oh, probably months ago, last year, 2021, on my varnishing process. Uh, so I went through the whole thing with with uh, how I do it. So, but there's many ways to to varnish. There's lots of lots of different lots of different products. And a question. Um, when, uh, maybe this is for Sharon. So sorry, I'm going to, I don't think Sharon's here, but, uh, when adding pigments to medium, are the colors more vibrant? Um, uh, not necessarily. The colors will never be more vibrant, uh, than they are right straight out of the tube. But, um, that doesn't mean that adding them to a medium will, um, will diminish the vibrance. Um, because most mediums dry clear and uh, it can be a little, some newer people get a little confused because when you mix up, say, a color with Floetrol, just one color, you mix it with Floetrol, it can look a little dull or a little milky perhaps, but that's because the, when it's wet, the Floetrol is kind of a milky, has a milky look to it, but all mediums do. So Liquitex, uh, pouring medium, golden pouring medium, they all have this like milky white look. So the colors can look a little less vibrant or intense when you mix them with a uh, pouring medium. But when they dry, the pouring medium is clear. It goes tr completely uh, clear and then the vibrance comes back. But um, you should know that all, um, all acrylic paints dry a touch darker than when they're wet. And, and so, when they're in their wet state, right out of the tube, that's as, as vibrant as they'll ever get. Um, when they dry, um, they will remain, the intensity will, will remain, but they will darken just a hair. And uh, there's nothing we can really do about that. That's just the way acrylic paints work. That's just their makeup. Um, but you can make, you can kind of bring them back to life a bit uh, if you put a top coat on your, on your paintings once they're dry and cured. So uh, like a Liquitex varnish, like what I like to use, it kind of pops the colors back to life. So hopefully that helps. And uh, and Star is saying, um, she saw art, uh, artists wet the back of the canvas before using it. What purpose does it give for the canvas? Uh, I do that all the time, pretty much on every stretch canvas I have. What it does, Star, is it kind of tightens up the canvas. They can be a little loose perhaps, like right out of the packaging. But if you spritz the back of the canvas with a little bit of water, uh, it tightens the cotton canvas up. So you have a really nice taut canvas to pour on. And I like, I like the canvas to be as tight as possible uh, when I'm pouring, because if, it ha if it's really droopy or saggy, um, you know, the, the paint will collect in there and it'll kind of wreck your design. Um, it'll like pool towards the center. So you want a nice tight canvas, but that's what that does, uh, spritzing the back, tightens it up. Great question. And uh, Susan is asking, how do you clean your sponge when varnishing? Um, I don't really clean it ever. Um, what I do, uh, I'll take one of my sponges, usually a two inch or, well, maybe a three to four inch sponge, like the bigger ones. And I always recommend getting the best quality ones you can. They're, they're pretty inexpensive anyway but they make some really cheap ones, which are not good. Um, so try to get the best quality, uh, you know, foam sponge brush you can. Uh, I get mine at um, either Home Depot or a Hart or a lumber store. 
that I go to. But uh, when I'm done, I try to varnish a lot of paintings at once so you can so you don't have to keep using sponge you know, like the foam sponges over and over again. So what I like to do is I'll take and set out you know four or five, however many I need to varnish. Um, I'll take my brush, I'll apply the, the varnish, and I don't dilute the varnish at all. You have to use it straight, um, undiluted with water or anything like that. Um, so I don't get the, the brush doesn't get completely saturated, only about the, the bottom half inch, you know, the painting edge and about a half inch gets saturated with the varnish. So I paint all my paintings, I apply a coat, I kind of squeeze, I squeeze some of the varnish back into the container. I use a bowl, like a, like a paper bowl uh, to work out of. I kind of squeeze the, the excess and put it back into the container. Then I take some cling wrap, um, like Reynolds cling wrap or Glad cling wrap, and I wrap up my brush. And there's still varnish in there. And it'll be good to use uh, for a few days. So uh, one brush you can use for a few different times, a few different days. Um, but you have to wrap it tightly in the, the cling wrap, um, but don't like bend the end, the edges of your brush. So, but then once you're done with that, like maybe you've varnished your set of paintings, you're pretty much done with that brush. I don't try to clean it or, or reuse it. Um, it just, cause you can never really get all that varnish out of there. It'll dry and then it'll get this hard. Uh, the brush will be too hard and then you'll get ridges and things. So you just throw that brush away and then you go to a next, another one when you do another set of uh, paintings. So hopefully that helps. Um, and they're only like a, like a dollar or two each. So it's not worth trying to save them in my opinion, especially if you're batching your, your paintings when you're doing them. Great question. So All right, let's see here. Any other questions? Uh, Kathy is asking, how long should you wait before adding the varnish to your paintings? Uh, it depends on uh, your climate, really. Um, if you're in a colder, like more wetter climate, your paintings can take longer to dry. Uh, I usually, I'm in San Diego, California, so it's usually pretty warm here. Uh, not a lot of moisture in the air. So for me, it takes my paintings probably, they're dry to the touch in about two days, max usually. But then I'll usually wait another week or, or week or two before I varnish. Um, I don't really varnish until I really need to, um, but I would recommend probably leaving your paintings to be safe, probably three to four weeks. Um, and if you're in a really kind of a wet, uh, cold climate, maybe even longer than that. Uh, it really depends. And it also depends on how much paint is on your canvas. Um, if there's a lot of paint on there, it'll take longer to dry and, and fully cure. So it's hard to give you an a exact date. But I'd say to be safe, I'd, I'd wait maybe between three and five weeks, something like that. And hopefully that helps. Good question. Uh, and... Uh, uh, Lee is asking, should the canvas dry before pouring? I think you're referring to spritzing the back of the canvas to tighten it up. And it doesn't have to be dry. I pour on it right away. So I'll spritz it and then it tightens up in about 30 seconds uh, and you're ready to go. So, and then I just pour right on top. So that's a good question. And uh, Lily is asking, or has a comment. I saw a video where the artist used a one half car sponge and a pantyhose to apply varnish. It works really well. Store the sponge in a Ziploc bag until next use. Um, I'm, I've seen that too. Um, that's great if, if that's the way you want it to do it. I don't like doing it that way, um, but uh, I like to use the foam brushes. That's what works best for me. And they do last, um, you know, a few days. So it's not like I'm throwing brushes away all the time. Um, and I, I do like, batch my paintings. So, but there are many ways to, to put varnish on your paintings. Um, my way is just one way, but that's the way I like to do it. And um, let's see here. Any other questions? Uh, Sharon has a 
a comment about varnishing. She uses a silicone makeup sponge to spread and it works great. That's awesome. Yeah, there's there's many different ways to uh, apply your varnish. Um, that's one way. Cool. Thanks for sharing, uh, Sharon. Okay. And uh, Monique is, uh, has a question. Can you use cling wrap for your cups with paint if you don't have lids? Is that enough to keep the paint from drying out? Usually if you keep get it on there tight, it will uh, keep it very nice and uh, tight. You could also use rubber bands over the cling wrap. Um, works really well too. I'll show you what I love to use though. It's like my favorite new thing. And let's see if I can find it. Hopefully you could find this. It's a Glad uh, Press and Seal. Um, let me show it. What does it say? Glad Press and Seal Multi-Purpose Sealing Wrap. Um, this stuff is awesome because it's kind of it's got a sticky side, and uh, and the sticky side sticks to the lid of your uh, cup perfectly. So I like wipe it. I'd wipe it with like a, a tissue or something to get the paint off, but it sticks on the lid great. It keeps it really airtight. And uh, you can take it off and use it again multiple times. Um, so it works really awesome. It's easy to use. Uh, I, I don't like to use the little cutter that it comes with. I use a scissors to cut it. And, uh, but here it is, here's a piece. So there's a, a non-sticky side and then a, a sticky side. And so like the sticky side just sticks to my fingers. It's very, it's just tacky. It's not super sticky, but let me do a test. So. Um, if you can get this stuff, it's really, really cool. I just got it at the grocery store. I'm going to wipe the kind of lid of my cup off and we'll do a, we'll do a test, a spill test. So I'm going to just stick it on there. So it's nice and tight and, uh, it's airtight. It's almost like a drum. And uh, you, I mean, you could tip it over. I've had these tip over on me and the paint doesn't come out, which is really good. So yeah, that Glad Press and Seal is really cool stuff. And uh, let's see, could I tip it over? Let's try it. Ooh, there we go. It's pretty good, pretty good. So I like that stuff a lot. So that was fun. Okay, great question. Uh, And Karen is is got a, a comment. She's lost her mojo, which is terrible. Um, I'm sorry to hear that, Karen. The mojo can definitely get lost. Monique lost her mojo a while ago, and but found it again. Um, so just stick in there. Um, the best advice I can do is if you're feeling uh, uh, like you know, frustrated with your paintings or they're not turning out the way you want, um, take a little break. It's always good to take a little break from pouring if you're feeling frustrated or you're not getting anywhere. And then when you come back, um, try something totally different, a totally different technique. Um, uh, kind of approach it from a different angle. Maybe try a different set of colors that you haven't worked with before. So try to just switch it up and uh, do something different to maybe, you know, get your uh, imagination, you know, uh, fired up again. So... Hopefully, though, you'll find your mojo soon. And uh, someone is asking, would wiping the back of a canvas with a wet cloth work as the same as spraying? Sure, you could do that. That's no problem. You could even take a little water in a cup and pour it in there. Not like a whole cup of water, but just, you know, drizzle some in there and then uh, tilt the water around and take a like a paper towel and just wipe it, like wipe the back. That works just fine, too. You don't have to spritz it. Um, but make sure you get in the corner as well. Otherwise, they can they can buckle sometimes if you don't get enough water, like in the in the corners um, that are over the stretcher bars. Sometimes it can buckle. So get some water up in there. But um, yeah, you can definitely do that. Uh, let's see. So everyone likes the cling wrap. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah, the the press and seal stuff is really, really cool. Super handy. And uh, 
And Monique has some advice for Karen. She says, stop painting a while and it'll come back. Great advice, Monique. Great advice. Awesome. And uh, all right, cool. Well, that is it for the questions. I don't see any others at the moment. Um, but if you have any last minute burning questions, throw them in the, in the comments. Uh, I just wanted to mention that I sent out an email to my email list uh, today and um, uh, I mentioned in the PS that I just lowered the price of my foolproof pouring acrylic pouring course. That's kind of redundant, <laughs> but uh, so it's half price right now. So I'm going to just throw it in the chat. And uh, if you haven't, if you're kind of brand new to pouring, to paint pouring, and you don't know quite where to start, and you're a little overwhelmed with all these different techniques and materials, um, the foolproof pouring course, I think, is a great place to start. Um, I walk you through the basic supplies you'd need. Um, we use just a very simple recipe and very simple, pretty inexpensive supplies in that course. We use Elmer's glue and craft paint. And that's it, pretty much. A little bit of water and some canvases and, of course, acrylic paints, um, you know, acrylic craft paints. And I walk you through the formulas and exactly how to mix the paint so you get the just the right consistency every time so there's no guesswork and uh it's a great little course if uh, you're brand new to pouring or really don't know where to where to begin so uh i threw that in the uh, i threw that in the comments and uh let's see if it shows up and there it is on facebook so and I think it's on YouTube as well. So if you want to check it out, um, feel free. It's half price right now. And uh, um, hopefully it'll help you if you uh, want to get into pouring, but don't know quite where to start, or you want to try pouring, but you're on a budget, this is a great way to do it. Um, and you can get some pretty amazing paintings with just craft paint and Elmer's school glue is what I like to use. And there's a new section in there with using uh, silicone if you want to get a lot of cells. So um, it's a great way to paint uh, for pouring. I teach you three different techniques. I, I go over the flip cup, the simple flip cup, uh, ring pour, and one of my favorites, the floating flip cup. Or maybe it's the open cup. I think it's the open cup. One of those two. Anyway, uh, so you can check it out if you want to. Um, and click on the link. It'll take you right over there. You can read up more about it. And, uh, and Carla is asking, um, is this the membership or something else? It's something else, Carla, but don't worry because you have uh, access to it already because you're in the membership. So you can access it anytime you want, the foolproof pouring uh, mini course. Um, it's in your products section. So uh, you already own it. Cool. All right. So thanks everyone for checking this out as it was fun. It was a fun experiment, a fun kind of new technique to try out. Um, I'm kind of eh with the results, but I think there's definitely room for more experimentation. So um, awesome. And Kathy just said she started the uh, course today. That's awesome, Kathy. Um, she thinks it's fantastic. I love that you try to save us money on supplies. That's so cool. Thanks for your comment. That's awesome. I'm glad you're enjoying it. And uh, if you have any questions, be sure to just shoot me an email or you could also message me on the website. Great. Thanks, Kathy. So, all right. So I guess I will see you next time. Hope you have a great weekend. Uh, do some painting. Uh, try to mix up some techniques. If you don't like this particular one or you can modify it, you know, try the ribbon pour on our flip cup base coat or something like that, give it a shot and uh, share it in our Facebook group if you would if you would like to, that would be awesome. And uh, hope you have a great weekend and I will see you again very soon. Take care everyone, bye-bye. <laughs>